Okay, so hi everyone. Welcome to my very first sharing. So today I'll be sharing on defect claims based on a webinar I've attended back then in July, organized by the Tulango Bar. Okay, so when we talk about defect claims, the first thing that actually comes to our mind will be this defect liability period which is um, available under clause 37 of Schedule G and also clause 30 of Schedule H. So it's actually quite a lengthy um, provision, but, um, but then I've already summarized into a simpler form for a better understanding and also um, our easy reference. So based on clause 27 and clause 30 of both Schedule G and Schedule H, the defect liability period will be 24 months. So it means that um, any defect discovered within 24 months from the day the purchaser take over become possession of the property, the, the purchaser can actually um, send written notice to the developer to inform them regarding this defect. And the developer actually has 30 days to repair the defects. And if the developer fails to do so, the purchaser can actually notify the developer regarding the cost to repair such defect before they can proceed to, um, to do so. So the developer will be further provided another 30 days to repair such defects. If after these 30 days, the developer still fails to do so, the purchaser will then be entitled to get their own contractor to repair the so-called defects and deduct the sum from, um, deduct the sum by help by the developer solicitors as, as stakeholders. So in order to do so, the purchaser will need to send written demand to the developer solicitor specifying the amount that they wish to claim. So upon, upon receiving such, um, such written demand from the purchaser, the developer solicitors shall re release such costs to the purchaser from the stakeholder sum. So according to the case of Casey Chan Brothers, Development Central Berhad and Tan Kong Singh and others, the High Court actually discussed on the purpose of the defect liability period. So in this case, the court actually held that in reality, some defects or non-compliance of specifications can only be discovered when the purchaser has occupied the house for some time. And this is why Clause 23 gives a grace period of 12 months for the purchaser to discover the defects and non-compliance of specifications. So after that 12 months period, purchasers may still enforce their rights under the common law for breach of contract. So based on this case, um, the court actually held that the purpose of the defect liability period is to give the purchaser a grace period to discover the defects and non-compliance of the specifications in their property. So as I mentioned just now, before the purchasers proceed to proceed to repair the defects on their own, they should first give the developer a notice under clause um, 27.2 of the Schedule G and clause 32 of Schedule H. So the question is, does the purchaser's failure of notice under the clause prevents the claim? So similarly, in Casey Chan Brothers Development Syndrome, Berhad and Tan Kong Singh and others, the High, Court held, um, the High Court actually held that the failure of the plaintiffs as home buyer to issue any notice did not prevent them from initiating their civil claim under the common law for breach of contract. So based on clause 37 and clause 30, if the purchaser fails a notice to the developer to make good the defects during the defect liability period, the developer is bound to make good such defects. And if they fail to do so, the purchaser can give notice to the developer, then proceed to carry out the repairs itself and claim such sum expanded from the developer through deduction of the stakeholding sum held by the solicitors. So the question is, when can a stakeholder solicitor release the sum to the developer in relation to a repair defect? So in the case of Embassy Court Syndrome, Berhad and Yip, Kang Fook and others, the High Court held that the purpose of stakeholder sum is actually to ensure the developer's obligations have been discharged in relation to the defects reported by the purchaser within the defect liability period. 
So as long as there is a serious dispute between the developers and the purchasers on whether the developers had repaired and put the defects, then the solicitor stakeholders had a legal duty to retain the sum unless they were given written instructions from the purchasers to release such sum to the developer. So it is also a requirement for the architect to certify that the defects have been repaired and made good by the developer before the solicitor can release the stakeholder sum to the developer. But in the case of Lao Kiho and Tan Wah Lens in Gampahat, the High Court actually held otherwise. So in this case, the issue is similarly whether the stakeholder can release the stakeholder sum at the end of the 24 months. But in this case, the court held that since the purchaser had only given notice and yet to carry out the works and only adduce an architect report to support their claim, the stakeholder can release the retention sum to the developer. Okay, so next there is also an issue regarding the defects discovered after the defect liability period, which um, we always name it, name it as latent defects. So in the case of Tear Came On and Another and Yo and Wu Developments in Drumbohat and others, this case is um the brief facts of this case is about nine months after the vacant possession, the occupying purchasers had to move out from the property because the foundation was cracking which eventually led to the disintegration of the house. So the expert witness ed evidence discovered that the soil movement was due to unsuitable sand, which were used to fill the construction site. So in this case, the defendant actually argued that the damage was occurred after the defect liability period, and so they are not liable for such defects. But in this case, the court held that the right to sue in respect of such defects which were not discovered within the defect liability period will not take away the rights of any purchaser, which normally follow at common law in the case of a breach of contract. So next in Ma Chalin and another and Malim Jayam Laka Syndrome Bahad, in this case, four rows of the terrace houses had massive cracks, foundation faults, sinking and other major structural defects which rendered the defective houses unsafe and unfit for human habitation. So the defective buildings were later torn down and rebuilt. So similarly, the defendant in this case argued that since the, de the defect liability period has passed, the plaintiff could not rely on it and the defendants are not liable for such defects. So the High Court held that the breach went to the root of a contract and such that there is an implied warranty that a house would be built in a workmanlike manner and with property, uh, proper materials and fit for habitation. So the court actually helped the developer liable for such um, defects. And in another case of Fong Wai Roti Syndrome Bahad and PJ Condominium Syndrome Bahad, the High Court held that as for the law in this regard, it is now accepted and settled that the defect liability clause does not take away the right to sue in respect of defects which were not discoverable. So even if the defects were discovered within the defect liability period, the provision of an express remedy for making good the defects does not take away the rights of the purchaser, which follow at common law in the case of breach of contract. So the HDR provisions are there for the protection of the purchaser and cannot be used to limit their rights under the common law. The purpose was to improve and supplement common law remedies. So based on these three cases, it's actually quite settled that developers uh, may be made liable for latent defects, even if it's discovered after the defect liability period. So in the event a claim falls out of the defect liability period and a purchaser intends to make a claim in court, the purchaser is actually required to prove his or her claim with credible evidence. So for example, they need to uh, provide the evidence regarding the proof of payment to the contractor and also to show that their, the quantum claim is actually reasonable. So when a defect claim is filed in court, expert witnesses and evidence is usually involved. So under section 45 of the Evidence Act, it's provided that when the court has to form an opinion upon a point of science, the opinions upon that point of person specific, 
specialists skilled in that science are relevant facts. So as um, defect claims are usually based, um, are actually categorized under the category of science, expert witnesses and evidence are usually required to assist the court to come to an, um, a decision. But then since um, the purchasers and the developers will adduce their own set of expert evidence and also um, call their own expert witnesses, so it's quite usual to have conflicting opinion evidence in defect claims. So in Dato Mokta Hashim against public prosecutor, the federal court held that it is open for a court to prefer the evidence of one expert to that of another, and it would not be improper to act on the opinion of one expert, although that is contradicted by another expert. So which means that the, it is up to the court to prefer on which evidence is, which evidence should prevail. So an expert witnesses uh, must be competent, which means that they must have the must have the qualification and also um, experience in that particular area that they provide the evidence. So in the case of Tan Tan Singh and another and Robina Results in Jambal Hat, in the case the witness did not possess the technical and scientific qualification nor any practical experience in relation to the matters, particularly the alleged structural difficulty. So the High Court actually held that it was unable to accept the witness evidence and it is a subject matter within the domain of expert witnesses under Section 45 of Evidence Act, which cover the opinions of experts. So lastly, it will be an um, issue on presumption under Section 114G of the Evidence Act. So similarly, in the case of Tan Tan Singh and another, the High Court held that the defendants failed to call any of the officers from the appropriate authority as witnesses to testify that changes or deviations which culminated in the construction would attract the application of Section 114G of the Evidence Act, wherein the court may later presume that the evidence which could be and it's not produced would, if produced, be unfavorable to the person who widows it. So, which means that if you have a witness who is able to prove your case, you should actually uh, ask that witness to ask that person to give evidence at least to testify as a witness. So, if you feel to do so, the court may actually presume that um, the evidence, if produced, will be unfavorable to your case. So that's all for my sharing today. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Uh, we, I think there is no question posted in chat box. So thank you, for Mayor, for the sharing session. And thank you, everyone, for joining us, uh, the sharing session today. So uh, later... LND will send evaluation form or feedback form to everyone. So hopefully we can receive your feedback latest by tomorrow, 12 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.